Hello and welcome back to a show I like to call Poe. Wasn't that in the news two weeks ago? And yes, I'm once again talking about a news item that I think everyone has basically forgotten about, made up their mind about and are ready to move on about. But I'm still interested and I'd like to make a video about the supposed serial killer nurse, Lucy Letby. Now I'm sure that you are already familiar with the broad strokes of this case. Seven babies in a neonatal unit died under Lucy Letby's care and I think it was two years ago she was charged and convicted with m murder and uh, was convicted of murder in all seven cases and will be spending the rest of her life in prison. Except the new evidence well, maybe not new evidence, but new analysis of the evidence has come to light that may exonerate her, which is how she came to be in the news again. And I have been following Peter Hitchens' uh, journey through this case since it first came to light. He has been periodically bringing up uh, arguments as to why Lucy Letby may not be guilty of the crimes she was accused of, or at the very least, bringing into doubt how certain we can be that she is guilty. And long-time viewers of this channel will know that I made a video years ago about the movie 12 Angry Men, where I use statistical analysis, just really basic mathematics basically, to analyse the evidence against the defendant in that film who was accused of killing his father. That was a rather light-hearted example of this sort of analysis where I was just talking about a film and it didn't really have any real-life consequences. But in this case, there really is a woman serving time in prison for these crimes and there really are family members of the deceased who I expect would rather just forget about this whole thing and not have it brought up all the time. So I will try to conduct this video with a little bit of decorum. And I'll also state for anyone who's not familiar with me that I'm not a statistician. I'm not a lawyer, a barrister or any kind of legal professional. I'm an engineer by training and by trade. And I'm just interested in maths and numbers. So in this video I will not be going into any of the evidence, or what they call evidence, against Lucy that dealt with how she treated the parents, how she had a, a apparent morbid fascination with the deceased and their families. Heaven knows I'm not to be the arbiter of what is considered normal behaviour and what is the appropriate way to emotionally deal with uh, difficult situations. I'm just interested in the question of can we use statistical evidence in this case, or indeed in any, any case, against someone to find out if they committed a murder or not, or any crime indeed. In this case, all of these deaths, the seven babies that died, died within a 13-month period at the Countess of Chester Hospital, where Lucy was working, and all of them died under her care. So from a statistical point of view, the first question that we have to ask is, how many deaths would we expect to see under an average non-murderous nurse's care in the Countess of Chester Hospital in a given 13-month period? I just want you to imagine that perhaps 200 babies would die in that hospital in that period. Perhaps seven deaths doesn't sound like quite so much then, although it does sound very depressing and um, not a very nice fact to consider. We would also need to know how many other nurses were working on that ward and how many were attributed to this particular nurse, Lucy Letby, and how many were under the care of other nurses. So if Lucy Letby was responsible for these seven babies in this 13-month period and the other 200, well not 200, but uh, 183 babies were under the care of uh, two other nurses. Well, it makes Lucy start to look like a really good nurse and makes these other two nurses look a little bit suspect. But in this case, it wasn't 200 other deaths. It was much less than that. 
never actually said in the footage, I realise now, how many deaths were in the 13-month period in the Countess of Chester Hospital, in the neonatal unit that Lucy Letby worked on. The number 15 was used a lot, including the seven deaths that Lucy Letby was tried for. And I couldn't tell if that was total deaths or if that was the number of suspicious deaths or unexplained deaths that occurred on that unit in the 13-month period. Either way, I think it's uh, 15 is a pretty good number to work with, which means that the seven deaths that Lucy Letby was tried for only accounts for you know, roughly half of the uh, total deaths in those 13 months that she um, that she worked there, that she was apparently committing these murders. According to the uh, the available data that I've been able to find, there may have been, it seems, somewhere between 30 and 40 nurses working on that ward at that time as well. So uh, make of that what you will. That's quite a lot of nurses to divide all those uh, those deaths between. The babies that were in Letby's care were far more likely to die than the ones who were under other nurses' care. And this was a key piece of evidence that was submitted to jurors. But I do have a problem with the way that it was submitted to jurors. And that is the prosecutor made this chart which showed all the other nurses who worked on the ward and displayed only the the deaths and the deteriorating condition of the babies and how that correlated with and let be being assigned to those babies when their condition deteriorated. The problem is that these babies who died, these seven, were not the only babies that died while Lucy worked at that hospital. Although it's very sad to consider, the reason that the babies were in a neonatal unit to begin with is because they're very poorly babies and they need constant interventions just to keep them alive. And sometimes it just happens that everyone could be doing their job right and they could be doing it competently with the best of intentions and babies do sometimes just die. But these babies who presumably were not murdered because Lucy was not on shift while they died or when their condition deteriorated. These babies were not accounted for in the prosecutor's chart of statistical analysis because obviously Lucy was not on trial for the murder of these babies so it didn't make sense to include them except that it it is very relevant from a statistical point of view but specifically it is what's known as cherry picking where you've taken all of the evidence that makes Lucy look guilty you've put it together and just discarded any evidence that might make her look less guilty. If you imagine a another nurse who's in a completely different trial for the murder of, let's say, two babies within a 13-month period, well, they could make a chart of all the times that she was on shift. You know, this, this imaginary nurse, let's call her Jill. <laughs> Every time a baby died on Jill's shift, they added it to her chart. And although it ended up being less than Lucy's, it still looks pretty bad because Jill was on shift every time that baby was showing you know, signs of medical trouble. And she was the only nurse that was present for both. And so you could do a statistical analysis for Jill that made her look very guilty. What I'm saying is that it's possible that Lucy Letby just got very unlucky or maybe she was um, incompetent or that led her to give a substandard care to these babies let's say but when you make a chart showing only the babies that died it makes her look like a, a, such a terrible nurse that there's no way that it could have been an accident you know this chart didn't show a list of babies that were in Lucy Letby's care who survived for example however despite the prosecutors using slightly dirty tactics to convince the jury that is the case in most trials that if, if you are adept at using uh, logic and identifying the logic of certain arguments you might be shocked to hear the kinds of arguments the prosecutors trot out or uh, or indeed de um, defense attorneys um, barristers lawyers whatever you want to call them they are not known to use um, absolutely rigid ironclad logic to convince jurors because unfortunately that's not their job. Their job is just to convince the jury and the average juror is not going to be that adept at detecting inconsistencies, logical fallacies, etc. However, 
when looking at the statistical case against Letby, I have to confess that it is somewhat convincing. It makes it look like Letby must have been either incompetent or, I don't know, it, like mythically unlucky to be on shift for all of these deaths. However, again, on back on the other hand, I am interested by this ethical question of how you could convict Lucy of murder under these conditions because the way that the law works is that she was tried for the murder of seven babies but those seven murders sort of happened as discrete crimes that she is being tried for separately but if you imagine that there is a certain base rate of um, infant death that happens on a neonatal ward it brings each of those individual cases into makes it uncertain because even if Lucy was uh, a, a serial killer and she killed six babies one of them could have just been an accident you know just a natural death and you wouldn't know which one or even how many of them there were so when examining each case individually you'd have to admit that there is doubt associated with each but the overall pattern is one of a killer by the way if you're interested in learning about the prosecutor's fallacy which is a specific statistical error that people often make um, regarding uh, criminal trials i suggest watching the video by dr todd grande that he released last week i'll put that a link to that in the description because he goes through it much more detail so much so that I won't even bother to go into it myself because he did such a good job you might as well just watch his video. <laughs> it's my sincere hope that everyone involved in the legal process is um, doing a good job of analysing the evidence uh, that's the the judge the jury prosecutor and defence uh, lawyers I hope that they have all done their done their job properly and that justice was served or is served if, if they managed to get the wrong conclusion the first time. I'm glad that this case is getting attention just for the fact that it's worth getting this right. There's a woman's freedom uh, hanging in the balance here. I think that's all that I wanted to say in this video and I'll just reiterate that I'm not saying that Lucy Letby is guilty nor am I saying that she's innocent. I, I hope that the courts come to the correct decision, whether it was the first time that they um, concluded that she was guilty or if she's appealed and found to be innocent or if she's found to just not have enough evidence against her to, um, to convict her. Uh, I think it would be prudent to not let Lucy Letby be a nurse um, for the rest of her life if she is released. Um, she, there are other jobs that she could have. Thank you very much for watching and and I hope I'll see you again soon in the next one.